Welcome back everyone, today we will be going over Unit 1 of Calculus AB, which is on limits and continuity. There are definitely a few questions from Unit 1 on the AP exam for both MCQs and FRQs. Make sure to subscribe to know when I release Unit 2 and also visit my channel to find problem walkthroughs. Let's start by defining what is a limit and what does it mean. Here we have a graph of y equals 3x. We can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is 3. This is because as the x values approach 1, the y values converge towards 3. Now, if we have a piecewise function where a point doesn't exist at 1, 3, the limit is still 3. This is because the graph continues to approach 3 when x approaches 1. Limits are all about the point being approached. Limits can also be one-sided and these are notated by a plus or a minus sign next to the value that x approaches. A minus sign means from the left and a plus sign means from the right. In this scenario, the limit from the left is 4 and the limit from the right is 6. Since the limit from both sides are different, the limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. Sometimes you will be asked to add or multiply limits and as you can see here, they are really intuitive. For example, you could be given two graphs and we find the limit for each of the functions and then we just need to add them to solve. The most common type of limit problems will be solving them analytically. With simple limits such as x squared minus 3, we can just plug in x equals 2 and find our answer, 1. But what happens if there is a division over 0? If we get a number that is not 0 over 0, we can plug in the numbers to find the limit on both sides. If it's a positive number, the limit is infinity, and otherwise it's negative infinity. If the two numbers match, you have your answer, but if they don't, then the limit does not exist. In this example of 0 over 0, we can simplify the limit by cancelling out the factor and get our answer, 5. In other examples, cancelling out may not be so simple. Here, we have to multiply by a conjugate to manipulate the numbers. We can do this because it is basically multiplying by 1 over 1. After multiplying, they cancel out and we can plug in the value and find our answer. For trig limits, we use the same steps as above, but we use trig identities when possible. Here are the most common ones. There are also special rules for trig limits to 0 specifically. In this example, sin 5x over x, we would multiply by 5 over 5. We can apply the rule to cancel out the sin 5x over 5x part and get our answer, 5. Similarly, if you ever spot 1 minus cosine x over x, the answer would just be 0. The squeeze theorem is also very useful for solving limits, especially trigonometric ones. It states if f of x is less than or equal to g of x is less than or equal to h of x, the same also applies to their limits. When given the sine limit, we know that the value of sine is only bounded by negative 1 to 1, so we can set them in an equation. We can multiply all three parts by the outside value as well. And at the end, we just take the limit of all three. We end up with the answer of zero. When a limit equals infinity, this means that there is a vertical asymptote. The function continues increasing forever and never reaches the point. This is shown in the graph. However, limits to infinity are horizontal asymptotes. In this instance, the graph approaches four as x approaches infinity, but will never reach it. We can solve limits to infinity using three simple rules. The first step is identifying the growth rate of the top and the bottom. For example, an exponential function grows faster than a polynomial function. If the growth rate on the bottom is larger, the answer is zero. Examples of this include x squared over x cubed or x to the power of four over e to the power of x. Secondly, if the growth rates are the same, we take the fraction of the leading coefficients. The last rule covers if a larger growth rate is on top. We plug in a large positive number if it's positive infinity and a large negative number for negative infinity. The sign of the answer dictates if the answer is positive or negative infinity. The other topic of this unit is continuity. 
When something is continuous, it does not break. Here are three types of discontinuities. The first is at a point where a function has a limit, but there is no point at the value of the limit. It can be somewhere else or it doesn't exist at all. In jumps, the limit from both sides are different, and there is a large space in between them, and it's kind of like a jump. In asymptotes, the limits go to infinity and are never able to reach each other. Continuity is guaranteed when the limit equals the point. Given this piecewise function, we can test its continuity by finding f of 2. We plug in x equals 2 to the function that has 2 in its domain. We find the limit from the left and from the right, and they are different. The limit does not exist, and this does not equal 2. That means the piecewise function is not continuous. Another common question is finding a value to make a piecewise function continuous. In this example, we know that continuity requires limits from both sides to be equal. We set them equal to each other, plug our values in, and our answer is k equals negative 1. The IVT, which is also known as the Intermediate Value Theorem, is a theorem that involves continuity. It says that if a function f of x is continuous on the interval a and b, then it includes every y value between f of a and f of b at least once. In this example problem, all three intervals contain negative 1 because it is between 1 and negative 2, negative 2 and 3, and 3 and negative 5. So that was it for unit 1. Limits and continuity on the AP exam are pretty simple, so you should just make sure to remember the basic rules I have gone over. If there's anything else I missed or you don't fully understand, feel free to leave a comment and I can help explain it to you. Thanks for watching and subscribe to know when I post a video on Unit 2.